Hello and welcome to another Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Tonight I have for you a brew that a local put together and we're going to call it Sid's Windmill. That's right folks, we have a mill deck for you. And believe it or not, we ran this through the little gauntlet that we had um, with some of the live streaming you might have saw us past weekend. And it won quite a few games based on the mill plan. Now I did change one uh, cart. I switched out Vincent for Prish. I'll talk about that why in the video once I go over the forwards. And ultimately I think this is just a very fun deck to play. You know, it, it has a lot of stability in terms of lasting power. It can also, some cards will make your opponent just not want to attack for a few turns. So anytime that you're delaying the game or you're able to give something brave and put in a point of damage, you know, that's effectively helping accelerate the mill plan. So this deck does a lot of interesting things, and I think if you guys have been really looking for a mill deck, I mean, I know I posted one on the channel early, and I wasn't in love with it, but this one definitely has some more staying power to it, and I think it's a step in the right direction. So first, we're going to talk about the forwards, then we're going to talk about the summons, and wrap it up with the backups. So let's get right into it. So up first, we have Sid, again, the namesake of the deck, and kind of the whole reason that you're playing this. Uh, he's a 2-drop 5,000. Whenever he deals damage to a forward and it goes into the break zone, uh, that turn, they mill the top two cards of their deck, or put the top two cards of the deck into the break zone. And again, this is really important because it does things like it'll block the one cost Yuffie, which is extremely relevant. And if you're not <laughs> if you're not playing a deck that somehow has an answer to that, you better be able to rush it because one drop Yuffie is the truth. So it can prevent them from playing that. It's also a really great card against the early aggressive decks that want to play something like uh, Tifa or they want to play Haste Lightning. Sure, they're going to be able to tap them down for a turn, but then it's a 5k that walls them off. So it's just a great card to play early, and you'll see later that it does synergize with the 4-drop set, quite obviously, with the special. Talking about mill, 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 we have Thief. 2-drop, uh, 5k, again, okay stats. Uh, when it enters the field, your opponent puts a top card of their deck into the break zone. So again, this is just the mill plan. It helps accelerate. Um, and you'll see we do play some backups that give them a little bit more life. Now going to our Earth uh, forwards. Two drop Seraphy. This is, this is great for two different things. Once again, the X-Burst. It is a May effect, so don't forget about that. But it's great for getting back a Thief late game or a Prish if you want to grab back a Prish. It has a lot of utility in this deck, and again, being able to have extra mill cards is certainly helpful as well. But also, it's just a great card to play turn one if you're on the play, because you can pitch something, get it back for free, and you have a 6,000. That, again, is going to have some lasting power, and you'll see with the summons that we play as well, it can really you know, set you up to help stall for a couple turns until your opponent draws into the right answers. So again, absolutely, this has just been a great card for this deck, and how, he, how Aaron put it together and the different synergies uh, that happened with it. The last two drop is Dark Knight. Now these games are going to go longer and hopefully you're going to stabilize around four or five damage. So effectively, it's going to be a seven or eight K um, for two, which is very, very good spot to be in. There's a couple games that we had played where, you know, I was able to get them to five or six damage and just not able to finish them off. And we kind of just sat there awkwardly. Um, so this is a great card for a more mid late game plan, which again, this deck is all about the late game because that's how it's going to win. Not every game. Some games, you, you, you see we play do, we do play a lower curve, so some games you'll just win on damage, but the whole point of the deck is to mill out your opponent, so playing cards that have um, late game utility certainly is a huge plus. Uh, four drop Riku, four drop 7k, and there's a battlefield. You can choose to return up to your five backups uh, you control. This is mostly for the fact that we play the two drop mill Riku, uh, two drop backup that is, but it does offer the utility to, you know, if you play your Thiefs early, your backup Thiefs, let's say, it gives you the option to play like Thief, 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 uh, do some stuff, doll them for the CP, play her, bounce the Thiefs back to your hand, play them again, and mill them for more cards. So there is some uh, cheeky utility in this card itself, but again, it's mostly for the fact that we really want to use it special. Um, and again, we play Maria, so it does. we can buff it up to an 8k, uh, but that's not, you know, Generally not what it's being used for in the deck. Speaking about buffing things for a thousand to make them a very good card, we have the four drop Sid. Um, again, he has the same effect as a two drop, uh, but he also has high win, which again, you discard the two drop Sid and dull him. Uh, your opponent puts the top two cards of his or her deck into the break zone. So again, he's either going to mill something when he kills it in battle, which again, you can buff him up to a 9k. We have battle tricks. Sid's going to mill a lot of cards, I found out very early. Or he's going to stall your opponent saying, oh crap, I can't attack into this 
because he's just going to have battle tricks or he'll mill cards. So it, it makes it very, very difficult for your opponent. So unless they're playing like lightning or ice or maybe they have a fire red mage to make them not be able to block, it's a really great card to kind of wall them off and prevent them from doing anything. So this card I, I tried my old, an old deck that I posted, wasn't that excited about it, but he added some very interesting cards that has really brought four drops into life. A card that I had just, man, I was just completely wrong about it. I just didn't read the second part of the card, so I didn't give that enough credit. When he enters the battlefield, you get to play a win for it from your hand that costs three or less. So you're getting free utility out of that. So think about it as, um, depending on what your backup scenario might be, you're, you're saving one or two cards, effectively reducing his cost. So you want to think about him as a, like a pseudo three drop almost. He, he gets more guys on the board, which is great. But what's really, really important is that when he attacks, choose up to two of your backups you control and activate them. Uh, you'll see a little bit later that Riku herself costs, uh, you have to tap Doll her, sorry, and one other backup to mill a card. So effectively you get to, okay, main one, I'm going to mill a card with Riku, I'm going to attack with Van, who again, we have a lot of battle tricks in this deck, folks. There's a lot of shenanigans that will happen. Uh, activate my Riku and mill another card from Riku. Uh, I've seen him do some disgusting turns with uh, this and having some battle tricks and some other things that just really help support uh, the Riku mill plan. And then lastly, a card that I added, this is the only card that I switched, I only switched three cards from his original list, is Prish. I felt with how much this deck is doing, how important the late game is, I just had to include this card. Um, we replaced the Vincent with it, and I believe he was running the five drop Vincent if I'm not mistaken. Um, we just really want to have a card that can wall off. It be, but it's the best blocker uh, in the game, quite honestly, and it just helps us survive. And again, we are playing a more late game deck, so this card, as you've seen in my other videos, it really, the Brave, being able to give a Brave, I apologize, is just so helpful that you get to threaten damage, and again, that's technically milling another card, and then you have this insane blocker on defense, so really, this card to me feels like an auto include simply because we're going to the late game, no matter what. It's you're not. This is not a, a fast deck. It is very slow, grindy deck, and we need cards like Prish to help us survive that a little bit longer. So that's all the forwards, and now we're gonna get into the backups. Now I know this card um, how it reads, but the correct wording on Golem is that whenever it's blocking, it gets plus plus four thousand. So there is an errata in this. The uh, game creator answered it on Twitter. So this is both an offensive and defensive cards. Offensively speaking, it can deal, uh, you can attack with something, give it plus 2,000. Again, we saw Van is a very good candidate for this card. They're gonna try to chump block with an 8K um, and think that they're gonna be okay. And then you go, okay, no, I'm gonna make him a nine. I still get to untap Riku and now my guy lives. Or again, thinking of Sid, we can turn Sid, four drop of course, into a 12K blocker that's gonna mill them two cards. Um, yeah, I'm all about that life. The Golem has been a very, very great card for the... I mean, it's great for aggressive because it only costs one, but it's really good for defensive decks as well because it gives you that you know pseudo-prish effect where they're going to get plus 4,000 on blocking, which can absolutely make that block in your favor. A card that I kind of wrote off, but he put to a lot of use in our matchups was Titan. Um, choose a four you control, doll it can't be broken this turn. So you get to do really crazy things, like if they, you know, they played Odin or something, you get to save it. Um, some sometimes you'll just have to survive a couple turns, you'll get to, uh, you know, block with a thief and then doll and prevent it from being broken to last a couple more turns. It really is just a great uh, utility card. And I believe this was also answered on Twitter, I'd have to double check, so don't take this as gospel, but Titan and Kefka does work the way you want it to. Saying that you can buff something with Kefka, then use Titan, and Titan will save your card. Again, I'm going to try to look that up real quick um, after posting this video, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure because we did have a discussion about that uh, as we were playing it. So even if that doesn't work that way, the fact that you can cancel an Odin, uh, especially again, we're playing Prish, so that's a very important part, that we need to be able to protect, protect that card. So Titan gives you that survivability and you know can effectively cancel one of their spells which can help you out quite a bit. Uh, to Hef Kancher, or again, just Bike, I can never say its name, you just have to be able to answer some backups in the game. That's just a fact. If you're playing Earth, you're playing at least two of these. Um, the deck doesn't have Archer, so I could, all, I could definitely see a uh, case for running three of these, but I think having a two of is the absolute minimum. Uh, and then a two of Bale 4. Kind of like the same reason that we were playing the uh, 
forward Riku to bounce some backups. We're going to play Veil 4 for two reasons. One, it lets us replay our Thiefs. Uh, and two, it can set back our opponent. Now keep in mind, if you try to do this at the end of your opponent's turn, the way the rules, to our current knowledge of the, at the time of recording this video, if you play Veil 4 at the end of their turn, it is not like magic. You go back to your opponent's second main phase, they get to replay all those cards, and you, you're not going to force them to discard. Yes, they're discarding things to play them, I get that aspect of it, but that is, I just want to be 100% clear on the rules, that you will give the, your opponent the chance to play those cards again. Keeping in mind, this is also a great card to play in combat. Your opponent plays a bunch of stuff, they go to combat, you play Veil for it bounces their cards back to their hand, and then you get to live uh, that turn because they can't play something, uh, unless they have like a Tama, I guess. Um, they can't play something and give it haste to attack you. So this card can effectively negate their combat phase, and if your opponent overextends for whatever reason and they just don't play around it, um, this card can lead to some absolutely potential blowout. So... I think the card's great as a one or a two of um, in most wind decks that want to go to the late game. So this is absolutely one of those decks that wants to you know survive, find a way to last a couple extra turns, and the fact that it can bounce in combat is amazing. Now we're going to move into our backups. You'll see that we are playing a lot of cheap low curve backups, uh, most in this deck that I've ever seen or I've ever put a list together for, and it's just absolutely important for what they do. So, Thief, mills a card, two drop backup, great to play in your first turn. Uh, not much needs to be said about that. Two cost Riku, this is kind of the one that I've been talking about uh, for the whole point of the video. Uh, pay one and dull her, you get to mill opponent's card, but also she has Mug, which is very, very, very good. So you have to discard Riku to, to play the effect, I get it. But you're going to mill two cards of theirs and get to draw a card. So you're replacing those uh, forward Rikus that we had mentioned are just not that great in general. Uh, but again, it is very important to run them for the mill aspect. So you get to, you know, essentially pitch that card for value other than using it for crystal points, and you're still going to accelerate your mill plan for the game. So it's absolutely a, just a great utility card uh, to do a lot of different things. And I absolutely love Riku, and I want to see more mill decks pop up. Then we're playing Geomancer as a two drop. Uh, when it comes to the battlefield, choose a four, give it brave until on a turn. Uh, just being able to give something the ability to attack for a turn and still have it for a defense is just absolutely critical. And again, we really needed some kind of earth um, two drop to play or some kind of early earth backup just so we can play our Kafka, we can play our Precious early if we have to. It opens up a lot of utilities. And again, if you're playing a two color deck, try to include some number of two drops of each of the colors just to help your uh, games go a lot smoother. Then there's a two of Maria. Giving your guys plus a thousand power is just so extremely relevant. It's um, if you're coming from other games, you'll realize how uh, that plus a thousand power might not seem significant, but once you do all the math, once you realize the the trades that that can make in your favor, it is absolutely a critical card. So if you were playing a win deck, you were playing two of this card. Uh, there's just no chance to argue it. If you're playing uh, dual dual color or mono, what have you, you are playing two of this card every single time, no questions asked. A card that might seem a little bit weird as a three of, uh, we have Kafka. You can tap and give something plus 5,000 power. The reason why we run this as a three is because we absolutely want to see it early. As you saw earlier, we have a lot of two drops that, like Thief, for example, it comes in, it's only a 5k, it's probably not doing a lot, and it just sits there sometimes. But then you have a, if you find your Kefka early, you can threaten to have a five, uh, a 5,000 plus 5,000, so 10K in this case, blocker, or just any blocker gets plus 5,000, was what I'm trying to say, um, can absolutely threaten your opponent from attacking or prevent them from attacking because they don't want to lose one of their best guys. And this is also great on offense if you just really need to push through a couple of points of damage. Let's say that they're at six. You can then just fling your thieves at your opponent because they're going to be at six damage, they're forced to block, and you know, 99 times out of 100, they're going to kill whatever they're smashing into if it's being pumped with Kefka. So this card has been great in getting some extra utility out of your guys. And then lastly, Devout as kind of a, uh, a curve topper, and there's a battlefield cost two or less from your breaks or into the field. Now again, keeping in mind that uh, things like Thief just say when it enters the field, it doesn't care about where it comes from. Um, it gives you extra Thief triggers, it can give you an extra um, Seraphy trigger so you can go get back another card. Um, it really just adds utility to give you multiple options and let you do a number of things that um, you might not be able to do otherwise and it's just that great curve topper as well being as a five drop to get you 
some kind of thing, something back. So again, think of it as more of a three drop because it does get you a two drop back. It immediately goes into play and trigger the effect. So that is the deck guys, Sid's uh, Windmill for lack of a uh, better name. So again, thank you to Aaron for letting me uh, put his deck on the channel. Um, absolutely, again, it was a sick brew to play against. And I did change, again, the one card, but he was playing the Vincent instead. So feel free to change the numbers around a little bit. You know, always take these decks with a grain of salt, you know. I'm pointing out the, vi the video so you guys can have different options, see what different synergies people are using. And I just want to create a discussion for what decks to use going forward. And again, if you're going to the tournament this weekend, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, I, I really wish I could be going. Um, it's going to be just an amazing event. And the game creator is going to be there uh, no less. So that is awesome. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure to let us know in the comments below what kind of decks you'd want to see next. We're always looking for you know new color combinations that you want to see. Maybe say, hey, I really love uh, Ishtola. That's going to be our video for next week. Brew a deck for that with Ishtola in mind. Like, you know what? I got you. We're going to do like a Cecil Ishtola, uh, ping your guys to death kind of, kind of deck. And I'm really looking forward to posting that list. Look forward to it next week. But thank you very much for watching, guys. And we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one.